Bright, friendly, and interested in everything. That describes Lucas Ritz. Kind of like me, very, very curious. He would often take things apart. And even at eight years old, he would come up with different components that he had found and said that he'd taken apart, didn't know how to get it back together. Very curious, very loving. Lucas had a special bond with both his older brother Ian and younger sister Kyra. But of the three, he was the most outgoing and had lots of friends. His mom recalls learning to roll with his spontaneity. Oftentimes, we'd be sitting down for dinner and here would come someone down the dock. We're like, oh yeah, nice to see you know, a friend of ours. And they're like, oh, you know, I'm just coming for dinner. Luke said that, you know, we, I was invited. I'm like, uh, okay, throw another, you know, <laughs> throw another patty on the grill. <laughs> At that time, their home was their sailboat. Lucas shared his parents' love of the water and sailing to visit new places, and he dreamed of becoming a boat captain. When the family was not traveling, home base was a marina near Scappoose, Oregon. August 1, 1999 seemed like any other hot summer day, and friends asked if the boys could go swimming. Somebody had brought a big inner tube down. They suggested we all hop on the inner tube and float down um, with the current down to the end of the dock, hop out, bring it back, do it again a couple times. And of course the normal caveats were, number one, everybody will have their life jackets on, of course. And number two, mom will be walking along the dock as you guys are floating down, making sure that everything is, is uh, as safe as it can be. So they set out to do this and I continued working on the boat. Me and a couple, two friends, um, hopped on and started going, and my brother Luke had wanted to come with us, um, but we had already taken off, so he jumped in and was swimming after us. And um, he got up to us, and we were trying to pull him into the inner tube, and it just wasn't, just really couldn't quite get him on. The tube was slipping over as we tried to pull him onto it, so we tried for about a minute and a half, two minutes or so, and we couldn't, just couldn't get him on there. Um, so then he was like, you know what, don't worry about it, I'm gonna swim back to the dock, and I'll meet you guys at the end, and we'll walk down, and we'll do it again. They went past a boat, I walked past on the other side, and then I saw that he was coming in toward the, um, toward the dock to get out of the water. And all of a sudden, he, you know, he screamed, and then um, he rolled over on his life jacket. The life jacket supported his head and um, kept him up out of the water. And, and I thought, wait a minute, what's going on? So I ran down the finger toward him, but the current was carrying him, so I, I went back around that boat to the next um, dock finger. I was working away on the boat, and I heard a commotion. So I stuck my head out the companionway, and somebody yelled at me, where's Cheryl? You know, Cheryl being a nurse. And then I saw some people running, so I, of course, got out of the boat and, and went down there uh, as quick as I could. When my mother yelled for help, um, we all jumped in the water to start swimming towards him. As we're getting closer, the water just starts to pulse, kind of, for lack of a better word for it. The whole, like, it felt like the water was just vibrating very, very quickly. Um, and it, it, it really caused me to pause for a moment because it, I'd never felt anything like that before. As we got closer and closer, it became, you know, we could start to feel tingling on the skin. Um, and it, it was very, it was getting very strong. But the current carried the boys away, so Cheryl took action. And I jumped into that other, into the water at the other um, end of that finger, and um, immediately I felt like I couldn't uh, move. And I thought, oh, I'm just afraid. I mean, because I, I knew something wasn't right. I see that uh, there are two people pulling someone out of the water, and uh, I recognize the life jacket. I'm very puzzled as to why he is apparently unconscious. First thing I do is check for respiration. And I didn't detect anything. Then I checked for heartbeat. I couldn't detect any. Hoping that I'm doing this wrong. Kevin and paramedics tried to revive Lucas before rushing him to the hospital. Friends kept Ian and Kyra as Kevin and Cheryl left arrived at the hospital and the doctors, some of whom we knew, and they did everything they could, and they came out and said, we're sorry. Nothing we could do. 
And I said, what happened? Explain this. They said, we have no explanation for this. My folks come home, um, and I, I, you know, looking at them walking to pick us up, um, clearly they didn't have Luke with them, which was uh, bizarre, I thought. I, I was, that was weird to me. I thought maybe they were, he was staying overnight in the hospital, or I didn't know. Um, but it was a little bit bizarre. And we got back to the boat, and, you know, we all sat down, and they, uh, they just told us, you know, Luke died. And I just, um, most horrible feeling ever, you know, you can't, there's no, you can't put it into words how just gut-wrenching that kind of feeling is. It was just whew, awful. The coroner ruled his death a drowning, but Kevin refused to accept that. There was no water in Lucas's lungs. His investigation led to the discovery that a boat docked where Lucas was heading was leaking 120 volts of electricity into the water. Electrocuted in the water from a leaky boat while touching absolutely nothing. And at the time, I thought this was an isolated, one in a million case. But I started doing some research and I started finding all of these stories with a lot of digging where people were saying, well, the victim said he was getting bit, like something was biting him. Or the victim said he was getting shocked. And all these cases, they were still marked up as a drowning, but the family of a lot of these victims were saying, we believe electricity was somehow involved in this. The Ritz family is working to raise awareness of what's now called electric shock drowning, or ESD, the cause of multiple swimming fatalities throughout the country each year. They started a nonprofit organization, Electric Shock Drowning Prevention Association, and are working with Safe Electricity to teach more people about this issue and to prevent the kind of tragedy they experienced. People have been swimming around docks and marinas for years, and millions enjoy boating. What's changed is the addition of electricity, from electric boat lifts and dockside accessory outlets to boats that are plugged into shore power when docked. With the motion of water, wires can chafe, energize metal, and cause leaking of electric current into the water. Without proper safety equipment, these areas have become increasingly risky and deadly places to swim. Losing Lucas propelled Kevin into a career as a master marine technician who trains certified technicians and others. He starts each class with Lucas's story and how he almost lost his wife in that accident. She jumped right beside him so that she could grab a hold of his life jacket. And thank God that she did, because you know what happened to her when she hit the water? She was being paralyzed. She grabbed the hold of that life jacket and could not let go. Most victims get in that same field of electricity that caused this issue, and they are simply paralyzed, so they can't swim. If they don't have some sort of PFD, flotation device of some sort on them, they drown because they can't swim. But Lucas's heart was stopped instantly. I did the CPR. His color was perfect, perfect the whole time. That just gave me all kinds of hope, except his eyes, and there was nobody home. He relates numerous fatal accidents. Samantha Chipley, 19, Michael Cunningham, 15-year-old, Ken Lutrick, 16, houseboat again. Now don't think that it's just because it's a houseboat they're worse than anything else, because it's not just about houseboats. It's about anything that has AC on fresh water. Alternating current or AC electrical systems are also found in other water settings, from irrigation pumps to swimming pools and hot tubs, and all have been involved with increasing numbers of accidents and fatalities. Electric current in the water is strongest near the source, with diminishing levels farther out, creating a gradient. Because fresh water is resistant to electricity, bodies, with their salt content, are more conductive, and current can flow through them between voltage levels. There's little risk of electric shock drowning in salt water due to its conductivity. The danger is greatest in fresh water.
Jason Whitaker is a marine electrician and manager of a marina boat yard. What was safe yesterday could be completely lethal today. He often sees boats in need of proper wiring and safety equipment. So boaters need to understand that this is a life or death issue and if their electrical system is not uh, properly maintained or upgraded, that could mean somebody's life. And it has. Many people have died from, uh, from a fault on a boat. A small but growing number of marina and dock owners are also becoming aware of the problems and risks. Step one was to uh, not allow swimming in our marina. If we eliminate that, we're eliminating a lot of the potential of electric shock drowning. Stan Tonneson also has electrical systems at the marina tested once a month and investigates if a problem is found. Kevin agrees those are good steps, but even if people stop swimming around docks and boats plugged into shore power, people fall into the water in these areas, so everyone needs to know how to react if electricity is in the water. Let's say you're in that water, you're feeling it, you tuck your legs up and you're going to reduce some of those voltage gradients, you're going to start feeling better right then and try to go out away from anything that could possibly be the source. I mean, so many of these cases we have ladders on the backs of boats or a ladder on a marina that somebody, they start feeling something, they panic, and what are you going to do? You're going to go to perceived safety. Go away from anything that could possibly be energized. On this day, Kevin is training first responders, those who might be called to a drowning rescue and who must understand that if electricity is involved, jumping in to help without killing the power could kill them, as has happened to others. It's a message that he wants everyone to understand. Head for the closest breaker wherever that may be. Kill the power as quickly as possible. Do not get in the water yourself. He emphasizes the issue goes well beyond marinas and big boats. Private homes with private docks, big issue. Our problem here is minuscule compared to like the Lake of the Ozarks, where there's like 25,000 private docks on that lake with electricity on them. He urges dock owners to have ground fault circuit interrupter breakers installed on the circuits feeding electricity to the dock and to have all metal bonded and grounded back to the source. Those who own boats with alternating current electrical systems should follow American Boat and Yacht Council standards requiring safety equipment. Kevin and ABYC strongly recommend regular maintenance using the services of certified marine technicians who have specialized expertise in systems on and around water. The Ritz family has been a source of knowledge and inspiration for many, as well as support for families of victims all over the country. They still enjoy boating and want everyone to understand that being educated and taking the right steps can eliminate tragedies like theirs and keep water recreation safe. Their lives have been changed forever, and sharing their story is a painful but necessary journey. Every time we have to go back and think about, talk about, you know, what happened there, it's tough. But the reason that we do it is because we keep tracking this stuff and it's still happening people don't know and that was us 14 years ago. You don't want this to happen to you because life will never, that hole will never be filled. It'll be there daily and it's so simple to resolve. Please, please educate yourself about electric shock drowning.